When I moved to business world, there is so many ways where you can make haram money. Haram money in Muslim is uh, bad, not good. When you have like one million dollar in your bank account, what they do? They use, yes, they're it. They use this money. Good, and you know uh, they keep this money in uh, like uh, from haram way. Ask a Muslim drink alcohol or eat pork. They'll say no, no, no way. No, no. Mm. never. But what about riba? <laughs> exactly. Same thing. Yes. Same thing, maybe worse. Right. Riba causes people to stay in debt and financially enslaved to banks, institutions, period. Listen, I believe very strongly in a scripture that says faith without works is dead. I've seen religion control people. How you do one thing is how you do everything. What's cracking, everybody? Money Smart Guy, Matt Zapali here. Hailing to you from Dallas, Texas. And in this episode, we have a reaction to retired UFC fighter and considered the number one lightweight of all time, Khabib Nurmagomedov. So my team presented me this interview where he's talking about now in his next phase of his life as a corner man, as a promoter, as an entrepreneur, and how he handles finances and who he chooses to do business with. So there's always lessons. Success leaves clues. Let's take a look at what uh, Khabib here is doing life post Octagon. Let's take a look at this. And I guess your whole life being circumventing or being involved in MMA. And now, alhamdulillah, after that, you're now more involved in business, etc. Yeah. Have you had to change your mindset in any way or are you kind of just using the same approach? <clears throat> no, it's a little bit hard for me because on finance, I am not very good on finance. And when I move to business, business world, there is uh, so many ways where you can make uh, haram money. Yeah, because mm -hmm. there is like okay, haram in uh, haram money in Muslim is uh, bad, not good. Money, where are you gonna keep this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is this is a hard question, you know. Mm. And like I'm Muslim, and I try to stay away from riba. And riba, one of the biggest sin Allah mm. mentioned in Quran. I'm Muslim, you know. Yeah. And I try to stay away from this. Here's the definition of riba in the Muslim faith. Riba, an Arabic word meaning to increase or to exceed, refers to unequal exchanges or charges for barring, which are forbidden by Islamic law. So I've ran across this many times in my career in personal finance. Uh, I've dealt with Christians, I've dealt with Mormons, I've dealt with Jews, and I've dealt with Muslim. And I'll tell you this, my experience with religion, this may be very unpopular for many of you who's about to hear this. So brace for impact. The biggest thing why I say faith made millionaire, not religion made millionaire. I say faith made made million because you have to expand your faith if you want to succeed in anything guess what happens when you expand that faith you find a purpose to a higher power and a person a high power causes you to push through the pain the suffering the struggle and you get strengthened in the process but notice i didn't say religion made millionaire why i've seen religion control people in the most stupidest most foolish ways especially in the cases of money I've seen people go broke because, they say, hey, Allah will provide, God will provide, Buddha will provide. Listen, I believe very strongly in the scripture that says, faith without works is dead. In order to have faith unravel itself in your life, it's just you're not waiting for God, whoever and however you call him or her, is to put a blessing on your lap. Nope, my friends, you have to go out there and get it. And sadly, people, pass away with this knowledge. And instead of passing on generational wealth, they end up passing on generational debt. They pass away thinking that interest or insurance is haram or God will provide in a Christian faith. Well, I don't need it. God's gonna provide for me anyway. My, my faith says, you know, trust God, trust God, trust God's gonna provide. Yeah, he provided for you an advisor in finance. He provided for you a manager in business. He provided for you an agent in insurance and or real estate to properly guide you and inform you and to educate you on the things that you may not know. You're taking coaching in many different areas of your life, whether you're football or in this case, MMA and, and fighting. How come you're not willing to take a coach on the personal finance side of things? How you do one thing is how you do everything. Please, I implore you, for those of you who watch the Seven Fear Squad YouTube channel, we are faith and finance type of channel, but it's not about religion. And religion will cause you to make some stupid, foolish mistakes that sadly are either irreversible or too damn late. And on your deathbed, you have a bunch of regrets. In your years of retirement, in a retirement home where you're dependent upon church, family, state, you're a ward of the state that you're in because you're on Medicaid, 
is because you didn't make the right decisions in your 20s, 30s, 40s, and 50s when you had the proper guidance. You had an opportunity to educate yourself at every stage of the way to learn up a new language of personal finance. And so this is getting deep here with uh, Khabib. Maybe a stud in the arena, might be a stud on the octagon when it comes to finance. I wonder who's coaching him the same way he had coaches, the way he had cornermen in, uh, in his fighting days. I hope that he has the same type of cornermen in his finances and he's willing to process it through. If he wants to process it through his religion, process it through. But I remember sitting down with Sheikh Amin and uh, he actually was in finance in, uh, in the UAE. And he actually said, listen, the people in the Muslim faith need to learn more about insurance because if it's so illegal to borrow, guess what? That's what you need to get a mortgage. That's what you need to get a business loan. How come the only place to borrow if, if you're in the Muslim faith is from the Islamic bank? They're charging you interest. They have a specific way for you, for you to get loan because it's halal, not haram. Food and finance, there's halal and there's haram. In America, understanding the system of finance and process it through your religion, and process it through the best way you can. Either you're going to be left behind, or you're going to be taken advantage of, or you're going to find a way to ethically get ahead according to respect to your faith, respect to your religion. You can still get ahead. Because I see a bunch of people that are either educated or non-educated, going to church, in a religion, or in their faith period, and because of lack of education, and processing it through their faith, and not having the enemy attack them with the finances. You got to understand this. The devil, the enemy, your, your adversaries, they're going to try to get you to keep you down, especially through the area and category of personal finance. So just be aware, my friends. I make some deal, make contract, or make some business money. Come, what you going to do? Mm -hmm. I try, I, I, I invest. Mm -hmm. But most of the people, like Muslim, I talk about Muslim people, mm -hmm. they they keep this money in uh, like like uh, from haram way. And and they don't even understand. No. They mm. don't even understand. Mm. You know, even me, like some of my money, like in a U.S. bank account. Mm. You know, honestly, mm. I'm gonna be lucky. I'm gonna be happy to keep this in a halal way. Mm. You know, I know they use my money. Mm. They know, you know, when you have like one million dollar in your bank account, yeah. what they mm. do? They use. Yes, they're learning they it. use this money. Good, and, you know uh, and they use this like for percentage, like whatever. But mm. I don't have alternative, like where I'm gonna keep this money. Mm. I cannot keep them like in my pocket, mm. you know? And uh, and uh, I wanna a little bit rush and yeah. talk about Wahid. When Wahid come to me, like Wahid people, they come to me, we, we, we meet like almost one and a half year ago. Mm. We meet, we sit, we talk, and they told me they plan. I really like this. I really love this because we have same view. We have same uh, same mission, you know? And uh, it's very important to like me, for example, person or like platform like Wahid or other people create some platform where it's going to be away from riba. Mm. Because riba is like one of the biggest sin mm. and people underestimate this. Riba can kill not couple people. They kill all like cities, countries, countries you yeah. know. And that's why it's like I joined with Wahid. Mm. I totally understand what he's saying. That the unnecessary charging of interest, riba, causes people to stay in debt and financially enslaved to banks, institutions, period. I totally get that. So if you're out there, you're trying to get a paycheck loan or a payday loan or a card title loan, and you're charging two, 300 bucks for interest, I would say that's riba. If you're out there trying to establish your credit, and sadly, the car loan place charge you 20, 30%. Sadly, you know what? The hard part about that whole conversation, in order for you to establish your credit in America, you probably have to pay some interest early in your career. But I would say if that's the way to get finances squared away. Some of you guys say, well, man, I'm just going to save and just buy it cash. I totally get it. But whoever in America, you need credit. And how do you build credit? You got to establish credit. And how do you establish credit? Is by having to sadly pay interest to a bank or a financial institution. I know it's crazy. It sounds foolish. But until there's another system of how money flows in this country, that's the system that we're under. I'm not saying that it's perfect. All I'm saying is it's better. You know, this experiment of America, it's the youngest country in the world because of free enterprise and capitalism has allowed this country to be the most strongest economic power, the strongest military power because of the system of capitalism, of free enterprise, where common Joes like me with no college degree, no pedigree, no sales back or no business back can, can take a $500 investment and create an $80 million company from scratch. That is America. 
That is that experiment working for a Filipino last name that had nothing to do with business previous to me. Because my parents decided to come here to America to do something new, do something that would detach themselves from everybody that grew up in the Philippines and start new with a hundred bucks in their pocket and a little bit of assistance from family and friends along the way. That's America. That's the American dream. Listen, with all respect to the different countries, even in my country, you don't hear people saying, hey, I'm gonna go to the Philippines to have the Philippine dream. Or people going to Russia saying, I have the Russian dream or the Argentinian dream or the Venezuelan dream or the Cuban dream or the Puerto Rican dream. They say, I wanna have the American dream, the illusion of the American dream. And everybody has their own version of that illusion of how that is. It's usually centered around, however, taking care of your family, making sure your family is safe, making sure your family is educated and a lot of opportunities and access are provided for them. What is your American dream? Put it in the comment section below. I'd love to know. Are you an immigrant? Are you born in America? What is your American dream? Put it in the comment section below. We're going to learn a lot about the Seven Figure Squad movement. Put it in the comment section below. What is your American dream? Put it in the comment section below. Because they offer and they show me their mm. project. They told me what they want. I'm like, okay, why not? Mm. I'm always, okay, for example, I have seven years contract with Reebok, mm. for example. Yeah. Why I cannot work with Wahid? Mm. Same thing. I can be ambassador of Ahed because we have same view. We have mm. same mission, you know. Mm. And um, even like, um, I know a lot of people, a lot of people underestimate this. A lot of people, okay, I don't do this, don't do this. But if you go deep Islamic finance, you're going to find a lot of crazy things mm. like uh, what people doing with your money, you know. Mm. That is so, true. I mean, you're, I mean, you're absolutely right on that. And this has been a big part of our mission It's just to, educate people yeah. because they don't know what they don't know and the moment they realize yeah, because you ask, ask a muslim drink alcohol or eat pork they'll say no no way mm. stuff will like never but what about riba exactly. same thing yes same thing maybe worse, worse. Yeah. Yeah. maybe worse yeah, yeah, yeah. same thing what? and the same thing too again uh, uh i just want i need to ask to my, my brothers and sisters, our cousins of the religious faith or whatever you want to call it so i'm christian and my cousins in the muslim faith if you say it's riba, okay, but how come you have a business and you own an alcohol, you own a liquor store? You have a business, you have a gas station that sells lottery tickets. That is hiram. So why do you have riba and you have businesses that offer products that are hiram? So it's kind of weird and twisted how if you are following your faith, then why do you have businesses that offer those type of things? I think that's what he's talking about. And by the way, same thing goes too with our Christians. It's very opposite that what one people says or what, rule or scripture that one follows that the action and the expression of it is completely opposite. So congruency is so important when wealth building. If you want to create generation wealth, I hope that you have congruency that what you say, what you read, what you talk about, you walk. Most of them like uh, they like almost in same level like killing people. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Allah Degrading. mentioned this like almost like same level. Like mm. you kill people, don't kill people. Mm. Yeah. This is not good. Don't do riba. This mm. is not good. Same thing, almost. Mm, yeah. One of the, how I many, like seven or ten sin he mentioned in Quran, yeah. mm. like biggest. Major this is like uh, one of the biggest sins, you know. It's, the, it's interesting how uh, even in Quran that an area of weakness that is being talked about to avoid is finance. I'm learning something new here. Of finance, handling of possessions, success, prosperity. That is where the enemy attacks. Same thing in the Quran, same thing to in the Christian Bible. Money, personal finance, over 2,000 verses plus about money, handling of possessions. You got King Solomon, who's regarded as the wealthiest and richest king who ever lived, dedicated the book of Proverbs and Ecclesiastes in the Bible, talk about money, generational wealth, success, prosperity, handling possessions. So both faiths have the same topic of discussion in what to avoid in the areas of finance. Finance is a very powerful tool, good, and at the same time we're finding out here too as well, also bad. Question for you is how are you going to use this tool? Are you going to use this tool to magnify? Are you going to use this tool to manipulate? Are you going to use this tool to bless? Are you going to use this tool to curse? How are you going to use this tool of finance? And I'm praying for you that are watching this that I pray that you use it to shine a light on the greater things that money can do. In which Allah says him and the Prophet are at war. Yes. Harb min Allahi wa rasuli are at war with the person who deals in riba. Mm -hmm. And uh, Ibn Abbas uh, said, on the day of judgment, you will be asked to choose your weapon. Imagine this, to fight 
Allah and his messenger. It's crazy. It's, it's you know, mm-hmm. I and mean, the thing is, I think because most people can't see the impact of it, mm. we don't think of it. No. But that's because, to be honest, we in the West mm. are generally the beneficiaries. Mm. Uh, and what, what, I, what I mean by that is, you see, it's something that when it's on a state level, like you said perfectly, city level, country level, state yeah. level, it destroys countries. Mm. They can't, you know, imagine someone who's drowning. That's right. And that's why communism and socialism is extremely dangerous. A couple of weeks ago, I was having cigars right next to the Cowboys practice facility here at the Cowboys Club with a gentleman that was born in Cuba, black, but raised in Russia. Check this out. Black, raised, born in Cuba, but raised in Russia. And why is he in Dallas, Texas? Why is he in America? Straight out of his mouth. It's the greatest place to live, to make money, to build a family, America. So, so many people are going against what America stands for, but yet this black man who was born in Cuba, raised in Russia, wants to be where? In the United States of America. You know, Russia can't own anything. No titles, no deeds. Cuba, no titles, no deeds. Venezuela, no titles, no deeds. And I can't tell you how many stories of people that had something. Next, you know, communism, socialism takes over. Bam. They were stripped of their homes. They're stripped of the businesses. A book I suggest you read is this book right here. Atlas Shrugged, written by economic author Ayn Rand. And if you're not going to read this whole thick book, at least watch the, what, five, six part DVD series. Atlas Shrugged talks about the dangers of when government gets too big, entrepreneurs are suppressed, and people aren't allowed, and inflation takes over. People aren't allowed to communicate and talk and and, and collaborate together. Inflation is just crazy. Who the hero is in that movie? I'm not going to spoil it, but who, how many of you have watched or at least read the book, Atlas Shrugged? Put it in the comment section below. I'd love to know. And you're giving them a hand, but instead of pulling them up, you're pushing them back to right. the water. Mm. That's what Reba does. That's I right. know a lot of people, like big businessmen, uh, like uh, when they realize what is this Reba, mm. like, uh, and they have like big contracts, they offer like big banks. Yeah. They want to invest. And when they understand this is riba, they say no. Mm. They say, no, no, only 1%. No, no. half percent. No. no, same thing, half percent or 50%. Yeah. No is no, riba mm. is riba, you yeah. know? And that's why, and it's a little bit sad to understand that there is not too many invest companies like who can help mm. billions. Yeah. Muslim people who want to stay away from riba, mm. you know, I know that in, even in Dagestan, where I'm from, a yeah. lot of people, they won't use halal invest money. You know, they have good projects. They have good business projects, you know, like, but there is not where they're going to take. Mm. Yeah. So I think, uh, Khabib here is going to continue down this journey and increase his financial literacy through the lens of his faith. And I encourage you to do the same too, as well. And many of you have a lot of conflicts and, and contradictions. Uh, do I uh, do I live my life blessed because I'm broke or blessed because I'm prosperous? I'm glad that your process is right now. You're watching this right now. You're conflicted. Look at you. You're conflicted. I could tell just by the comments right now. You're conflicted about whether it's blessed to be rich through investments, through earning interest in your savings and your, your 401k and interest in your life insurance policies and your real estate, whatever it is. Michael Saylor said in a PBD podcast, he's like a teenage kid who uh, had parents' keys to the car going joyriding. They popped the trunk, they seen you know, $100,000 in there. And next thing you know, everybody's going, getting drunk and on drugs. And sadly, it ends badly where the car is wrapped around a tree and a lot of people are hurt. A lot of people are destroyed because- Lack of wisdom in wise counselors around anybody, regardless of age, especially if you're younger, especially if you're older, you have to have wise counselors around you. So I'm just wondering here, um, because there's a lot of successful uh, 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 in entrepreneurs of the Muslim faith that use finance specifically in alignment with their faith, not haram, but using halal ways, using blessed ways to make sure they get financial ahead. But just because it's interest you know, just because it's, uh, uh, you know, I make, I buy this product and I, I sell it for a higher profit. That's interest too. But them, that's called profit. So there's a lot of conflict there. And so I, I'm praying for our cousins in the Muslim faith. I'm praying for you, that are, whether you're Jewish, you're Mormon, you're Christian, whatever faith you are, that you're led by your faith 
that you dig into the word, whatever scriptures that you're following to get deeper, more closely aligned with how your God is having you put money in your pocket to be a shining light for other people too as well. So that being said, guys, love to know your thoughts, your questions, your comments, put it in the comment section below. Before I let you go, again, check out this reaction to FTX, how to avoid head-on, how to avoid the scams right here. Please check out this reaction to FTX bankruptcy. That being said, if you haven't done so already, if you watched this video, please hit like. If you watch a couple of our other videos, please consider hitting subscribe. Please consider purchasing my Amazon best-selling book, Faith Made Millionaire. And until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to love smart, and be money smart today.